Coming up on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, the four apps I use every day in my classroom. Hi, my name is Guy Trenin and this is Mobile Learning in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I want to talk about the four apps I use in my classroom every day and the first one that I want to talk about is Google Chrome. Now a lot of people use different browsers. I personally like Google Chrome and I like it for a few reasons. One of them is that once you sign into Google Chrome and you can see that in the corner here and I'm right now from my laptop uh, it says that it's recognizing me and I can sign on as me on any other device and at that point everything that I've saved, all of my pages, all of the recent pages I've gone to, passwords or anything else I keep comes with me and immigrates to different devices and that goes across my mobile devices, my laptop and my Chromebook and the reason I like Chrome specifically is that I work with districts and with students who, works, who work exclusively with Chromebooks and that way we can communicate with the same uh, browser without having to make accommodations to different browsers so that works really well for me. What I love about this is it does allow you uh, to be recognized everywhere and to have everything you have immediately and all of your logins from uh, Google which are very common across of course Google Apps for Education but even for other uh, apps including some apps I'm going to talk about later today so that's the first thing that I use and it's very very basic it allows me to connect everything that I do the second app that I use every time I walk into the classroom whatever we're doing there's always time for students to work on their own or to do a specific task individually or in groups and for that I have to use a timer because I'm not really good at keeping time while I'm conversing with students and the easiest way to do this there are apps that will do this on any device including my uh, my iPad but the easiest thing to do is actually to go in Chrome and just all you have to do in the search engine is say timer and say how long do you need it let's say seven minutes you click on it the search engine will bring it up and it will start going so now we have seven minutes it'll ring and you can choose the noise at the end but that really doesn't matter but now it's visible if you project it like I am right now everybody can see it if not only you can see it but it's a really quick way to get it going and again you can do the same exact thing from your iPad or even from your phone without going to a specific app just alive in your browser and any amount of time will work on that so you can set it or you can use just this one uh, again going back and forth I use timer most often but you can also use a stopwatch if you're measuring speed how little time is it taking to for example everybody get ready and get going with the lesson so that's another way to do it but that's very very accessible very very easy incredibly useful and what I love about this specific setup is it's it doesn't require me to start anything else up I don't have to remember anything or where I put that app I just type it in the third thing that I use in my classroom on a regular basis is the camera and this is where I like the mobile devices a lot better than the laptops and Chromebooks because though they are truly mobile and all I have to do is activate my camera and I use my camera in a few ways first of all it's always nice to collect some photos that we can share with parents or uh, with colleagues if we want of kids being engaged of what they're doing and again what I love about the camera on the digital devices is right now it's a very high quality camera you can of course go between photo so specific photo I love videos if you want to do some videos uh, if you've got kids doing some actions for example in PE slow motion becomes very very useful lapse time if they're doing certain experiments or other things that will work with that but most of the time I use video and photos the other thing that seems to be incredibly effective using the camera is of course to look and collect student work so instead of collecting a lot of papers or if you're looking for evidence of learning all I have to do is be about the student's work make sure there's not too much shadow right now I've got a really nice projection but uh, this is something you want to be concerned about and then all I have to do is click and now I have evidence of student work that I can show to somebody else that I can send home to parents that I can process while the students are keeping the original or keep working on their draft so this is incredibly useful 
um, as a way to do that. And the last thing, and I've shown this before, is there are certain uh, structures that help you use your uh, mobile device with its camera as a document camera. All you have to do is set it above, put the document below, and then even without any other apps, and there are fantastic apps for that, but even without any other app, you can have it function exactly like a document camera. So if you have a mobile device like that, you really don't need an extra document camera. This can serve all of your purposes. And again, one of the advantages, you can have it in a fixed device, but you can also use it anywhere in your classroom. So if you're projecting, and you want to show somebody's work, you can just stand above them and show even better, stand above them, take a picture, and then show the picture because then you don't have to stay there frozen. But uh, if you want to show something in action, of course, the camera becomes useful again. And the great thing is, is once you take a picture, you also have the evidence collected and saved on your device. Um, the one thing I want to remind everybody is, especially if you're doing video with photos to a certain degree, depending on how much memory you have, you want to find a way to do some cloud storage so you don't have to store everything on your device because I know most teachers get the smallest devices possible from a memory perspective. This is just district choices to reduce cost. And as a result, they fill them up really, really quickly. So you want to make sure that you're saving space by using a uh, cloud services, and we'll talk about cloud services probably next time as a reminder of what's out there and what can be used. The last app I want to uh, talk about is called Padlet. And again, Padlet is an app that is available on your browser. It's available on, um, on mobile devices. And I'm going to show it from uh, my browser uh, because I've shown it before, and I think it's nice to see uh, from a different uh, perspective. So I've downloaded uh, the specific app. If you want to go to your apps in, inside Chrome, you go on the left side. There's a marker that says, here are your apps. In my case, it's on my second page. And this is the Padlet uh, app. And you can see that the login can be done through my Google ID. So this is a way to log in with uh, Google. And since I'm logged in, it already knows I'm there and it allows me to choose an account. And you can have multiple accounts, which is really nice if you actually have a, multiple accounts you're running, one for a specific class, one as a coach or something else. I like condensing most of mine under the same thing just because it's easier to do. And then what you can see is these are my uh, recently, uh, recently updated Padlets. These are Padlets I've used in my classroom for different reasons. And what you can see is this, is this serves as a board where I can post. And more importantly, everybody in my classroom can post. So I send them a link out. And um, an account is really helpful because then everything is under the same account. You can name your uh, page and then different students can post and again you can post you can see here text is very easy but you can post pictures you can post audio and you can post links to the web so there are lots of things you can put there and that's a very quick way if you're separating the students to do some group work when you come together from a jigsaw for example you can have each group talk about what they're doing or if you want students to comment and then share that's another way to do it so even in individual students or pair can each have a small comment they can then comment on each other's work and expand the scope of what's available there so a uh, Padlet is a great tool for on-the-go student work, students sharing with each other and sharing with you. And what I love about having a Padlet account is then it is all saved. So you can see this is from last semester for me, for example. I still have it if I want to look at it, if I want to see what happened, or even if I want to use it as an assessment, a formative assessment, this is a great tool. So today on Mobile Learning in the Classroom, we talked about the four apps that I use every day in my classroom. And I'll see you next time on Mobile Learning in the Classroom.